Hi everybody, welcome back to Adventures of the Old Testament, the Bible video game. This game has been cool so far. Last episode we went over Noah, Cain, and Abel, Adam and Eve. Uh, basically gives you either a little video to play or a game to watch, or a game to, a video, <laughs> a video to watch or a game to play. Our next game is going to be on Abraham. I'm going to try to get to Abraham today. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start the Tower of Babel. So this is after Noah's flood and Noah's ark. The people from all the lands came together in harmony to build a new city, a new world. Their building accomplishments were so great that Nimrod, Noah's great-grandson, envisioned building a grand tower. To protect us from any outside insult danger, comes from? <laughs> we shall build a great tower I didn't even realize high that was his to name. reach the heavens. This tower will make us famous and put fear into any outsiders who want to cause us harm. People will see it for miles, and we will be invincible. In dangerous times, our armies will rally around it to prevent our people from being conquered. Sorry. Yeah, but you'll also reach the, uh, the atmosphere, which we know now, like the, the outer atmosphere, it's going to kill you. It's not good for you. We've got our humans back here. But we as humans, you know. We always want to be the biggest and the best. Pride, it's one of our problems. In time, God became unhappy with the people as they hunted for power and fame. In order to stop the tower from being built, God commanded that the people all speak different languages. I can't understand a word you're saying. How can we work listening to that nonsense that you speak? The construction of the tower came to a halt because the workers could no longer understand one another. Over time, the giant tower of Babel began to crumble. And slowly, the families who spoke the same language moved away and settled in lands far from Babylon. All right, so now we go to Jacob. Or no, Job, sorry. <laughs> in the land of Uz, there was a man named Job, who was Job. perfect and upright. He feared I love God the story and of avoided Job. evil at all costs. He and his wife had seven sons and three daughters. His possessions included 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and servants to care for them all. God has truly blessed me with all that I have. But then the Satan challenges God and says he only loves you because, because of all that you give him. God watched from his throne and was proud of his father. Sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> Satan was out to prove God wrong. If you did not prevent bad things from happening to Job and bless him with all the riches that you have given him, he would not love and worship you as he does. If you took all Is his it? possessions and good fortune away, oh. he would turn on you and oh, curse okay. your name. If you believe this to be true, then I will allow you to test him. Take his blessings away, but do not cause him any harm. As Satan's bet with God commenced, he quickly <coughs> began to bring catastrophe to Job's life. Help! All the oxen and donkeys were killed by the attacks of the Sabaeans. I barely escaped, and I'm the only survivor. 
Suddenly, three more messengers came running in from the fields, each from a different direction, and each with worse news than the last. All the sheep and shepherds were struck by lightning, and now they are all dead. I'm the only one left. Oh, poor sheep. Chaldeans invaded the fields and slaughtered all the camels and their drivers. I mean, I, I know as it's fast just as I a could, game. So I could tell you, Joe, Still sheep. <laughs> all your children were crushed and killed when your son's house collapsed. I'm sorry. I was the only one that survived. No! No! Through all the grief that devastated Job's life, he still never blamed God for his tragedies. Instead, in his agony, he cut off all his hair and tore his clothing to shreds. That means he's God, devastated. You brought me into this world and blessed me with all that I had when I had nothing. Praise be to my Lord. You were wrong, Satan. He still praises me even after you destroyed his life. Because he still has his health and wasn't harmed. People would not praise you if they were struck with illness. If yeah, they will. If that ruining the health of a righteous man will make him lose his faith, then go ahead and cast illness upon him. But do not kill him. Satan quickly returned to Earth and cursed Job with a sickness so horrible that it left him covered in blisters and unable to sleep. The little sleep he was able to get, Satan haunted with nightmares. Job was unable to eat, and soon he appeared to be just skin and bones. Still, he did not curse God. However, his wife had a different opinion. This is all God's fault. He has taken everything we loved and owned from us. Now, you have been stricken with an awful disease. Why don't you just curse God and die? Job consoled his wife Ooh, as look he looked at, at her with his blistered eyelids. My dearest wife, don't be foolish. God blessed us with so many great things, but we must accept the bad things as well. Job's friends went to spend the time Lord with giveth him after and the they Lord heard taketh his away. horrible sickness. When they arrived <coughs> at the garbage dump to see him, the disease had affected Job so badly that his friends barely recognized who he was. For seven days, they all sat in silence. And then suddenly, why Job is there a camp trail in the a sky? Cry of despair. God, why are you allowing all these horrible things to happen to me? Just see that. I have loved and followed you my whole life, and I have never sinned. Eliphaz, one of Job's closest friends, was astonished by his irrational question. You need to calm down, Job. From all that I have learned and seen, God does not punish people who have not sinned. What have you done to deserve this? I've done nothing wrong. Look, it's a Kim trail. I have not sinned. Why is there a Kim trail? God knows that I there ain't no planes back then. It's okay. 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 But think God has punished you for no reason, then you do not know anything about the Lord. You must ask God to forgive you and apologize for your wrongdoing. You are not acting like my friends. The worst things imaginable have destroyed my life, and you dare insult me with your words. You do not speak for God. I would accept this punishment and even death if he would just come and speak to me himself. Only then would I trust him again. Suddenly, out of the heavens, God came and spoke to Job in the midst of a storm. Be a man and stand on your own two feet, Job. You will answer all the questions that I ask. Do you understand? Yes, my lord. You know nothing of my ways and will never understand how I work. Remember, I control the universe and I am in charge of this world. Do you think you could have created the earth and everything in it? Could you hold rule over all the animals? Over every living thing? Could you command the motion of the sun, the moon, or the stars, and everything in this universe? Oh. Answer me! I... I... I am the reason you and everything exists. It's one of my favorite verses. You do not know the greater good I desire for you. Your role is to simply trust me. 
even when times are bad. God's Amen. words brought Job to his knees. Now I know of my sin. Please forgive me for speaking of things I will never understand. I have faith and put my trust in you, my Lord. God quickly responded to Job's plea for forgiveness and healed him. He was blessed with twice as many animals, was given ten more children, and lived a long and prosperous life. Right. Oh, we get to play one now. Abraham! Abraham! The years passed. God the Creator had begun to be forgotten by the people. Hundreds of miles down the Euphrates River, they built the great trading city of Ur. The land was abundant with all the riches that people needed, but it was also filled with many different gods. Abram, why are you standing out here all alone at this hour? I heard God speak to me, and I feel that I must obey him. He wants me to travel to another land and leave my father's family and these false gods behind. There, he will show me how to build a great nation for our family and wants to bless all the people of Earth through me. As Abram and his father Abraham was settled really in old. Egypt, his worst fear was realized. Wasn't he like 60? One day, the Pharaoh saw Sarai and immediately fell in love with her beauty. Oh, this is In order to save his life, Abram, with reluctance, presented themselves as brother and sister. She is the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. I shall give you all the riches you desire in exchange for your sister's hand in marriage. It's an honor to meet you, your majesty. With no other choice, to save Abram's life, he and Sarai played along with the Pharaoh's wishes. But before the day of the marriage, God intervened and saved his chosen family. He struck the Pharaoh with a horrible illness that eventually took his life. The people of Egypt were not happy. They blamed Abram for the Pharaoh's demise and were determined to punish him. Okay, so am I running from angry people? Again? Oh, Abraham ha Oh, I need to protect her. Okay. So, am I going somewhere? Or? I guess I can go through here. Oh, I can't go through there. Okay, cool. Dead? Okay. Come on, Sarah. Sarah. I always thought it was Sarah. I think they call her Sarai. Oh, don't hurt her. Did I get her? Oh no, I'm sorry, Sarah. My poor wife. Alright, where are we going? Where are we going? We just gonna walk through. Let's keep going, keep going! Can I break barrels and stuff? No, it's not that kind of game, I guess. Don't hurt my wife! How dare you! You treat ladies with respect! By not hitting them. <laughs> What is this? Oof. Oh, beam of light to show me where to go. How convenient. Awesome. <coughs> okay. Things not working right. I have to go through that whole thing again. Oh, come on, please. Yes, I have to go through the whole thing again, but y'all won't see it. That wasn't blocked off before. 
Is it because this guy's still alive? Yep, <laughs> there it goes. Alright, light time. Welcome back. Let's do it again. I'm just gonna sit here and wait and see if it comes up. Okay. Okay, it never came back up, so I guess we're gonna watch the next video, which is lot. And then we'll just have to wait for more content. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know why it kept freezing there. One day while he was resting, three strangers appeared. Abraham greeted the men and invited them to be his guests. <coughs> Are they supposed to be talking? While they sat and ate, one of the strangers gave Abraham exciting news. Abraham, okay. one day your wife Sarah will give birth to a son for you. Nonsense. I can't have any children. I'm too old. As the stranger's visit came to an end, Abraham decided that he would walk with them for a while. Where does your journey take you now? We are headed to the city of Sodom to see why it is so full of sin and corruption. God may have to destroy it soon. Thank you. Safe travels to you all. That's where my nephew lives. They must be messengers of God. Abraham rushed to the altar and begged God to save his nephew and the city of Sodom. My lord, I beg that you save Sodom from destruction. Would you punish the righteous along with the sinful, even if there are only 30 or 50 good people in the city? Don't you think they are worth saving? Abraham, your faith in people is strong. I will agree <coughs> to save the city of Sodom in the honor of your faith, even if there are only 10 good men among them. Thank you, my lord, for blessing us all. Two of the three angels arrived at the city of Sodom, where they were greeted by Abraham's nephew Lot as they entered. Welcome to my city. Consider yourselves my guests. I invite you to stay at my home. Thank you, but we don't mind sleeping outside. I insist. It's not safe at night here in the square. There's something really strange about those two men. They just look too perfect. Perhaps they are rich? Yes. Tonight, after dark, a group of us will go to Lot's house and demand that he turn the strangers over to us. Then we will overpower them and take what we want. Late that evening, an angry mob of men with torches surrounded Lot's house. Lot stepped out of his home to see what the commotion was all about. Lot, hand over the strangers! No! I ask you to leave these righteous men alone! When Lot refused, the mob rushed toward him. Before they could reach him, the angels pulled Lot back into the house and locked the door. Break the door down! And don't leave anyone standing! Break the, the door down! He a huge log and rammed it into Lot's front door. The door shook with each hit, but the angels made sure that it did not break. Then, the angels used their powers to blind the angry mob. Hakushika! <laughs> My eyes! I can't see anything! God has sent us here to destroy Sodom. This city is corrupt and sinful. Lot. You will be spared because of your faith in Sorry, I still have a cold. But you must leave Sodom by dawn. I need to save my family! Lot ran and warned his family about the doom that was upon them. But his sons-in-law laughed at his absurdity and refused to leave. Oh, no. As the sun rose, Lot, his wife, and their two daughters followed the angels through the gates and away from the city of Sodom. Suddenly behind them, don't the look city back. burst into flames. Keep running and don't look back. If you do, you will die as well. This is horrible. It's the only place I've ever called home. Lot's wife turned to look back at the burning city. Oh, In an no. instant, she was transformed into a pillar of salt. Only Lot and his daughters escaped God's <laughs> wrath. Okay, guys, I mean, unless this is something, it's just Bible verses, right? I mean, you guys can look at these if you want. 
or you can go read your actual Bible. <laughs> so I'm going to assume that you're going to read your actual Bible. Yeah, this game's pretty cool. Uh, I wish there was more playable parts. It's mostly just watching. We got two playable parts out of this. Which, I mean, for $5, I can't complain. Especially since they're going to keep doing stuff with it. Coming soon. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but... Yeah, so that was Adventures of the Old Testament, the Bible video game, or what's out of it so far. It seems like they are still developing it. I wish they had more playable parts, because there was only like two little playable parts, and all you did was just run around and beat up people, which I don't see how that makes a Bible game, but would have been cooler if it was more of an adventure and less of a, a beat-em-up. <laughs> uh, but... I mean, they did an excellent job at it. I couldn't have done better, any better myself. I truly enjoyed this game, and I hope you guys did too. So for now, that's all I've got on this game. Uh, we'll update as soon as they update their game. So thank you all for tuning in and watching. If you did subscribe, thank you. Please, If you didn't subscribe, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you like this video. Thank you. Love you guys. God bless.